call it practicing because that's really what I want to encourage to happen. What is the purpose? Well, ultimately the purpose of everything in supernatural encounters is not actually the encounter themselves because you can all have supernatural experiences but actually the supernatural experiences are there to help us fulfill our destinies and our destinies is to be royal priests uh, that means having kingly royalty functions and a priestly function which ministering and doing the priestly stuff we've got um, and so that we can actually be manifest as sons of God on the earth so that everything that we do is to prepare us to maturity so that we can fulfill God's purpose for us uh, and fulfill his purpose for the earth and therefore to live a supernatural lifestyle as a gateway for heaven to invade earth ultimately God wants to use us to touch earth to touch people ultimately uh, and that that means that we need to do it the way Jesus did it and therefore we need a supernatural lifestyle really means being able to hear see and flow from the perspective of God and a relationship with God which enables us to know what he wants us to do so we can do it and so we want to develop our ability to see and walk in the light and that is something different from seeing as spiritual gifts and I'll, I'll explain that a bit later we need to access the realms of heaven um, because that's where God is and although he is here in our midst because he promises to come when we go there we are there free from the things that go on here and therefore there's restrictions that happen here which we want to be free from and it's easier to engage God in that realm so that those things can be outworked in this realm and so in a sense we want to access also and develop the kingdom of God which is within us so encountering God is both a relationship which is internal and therefore uh, in a sense within our spiritual realm within us now our spirit is not limited by time and space so our spirit is eternal it came from eternity it will go back to eternity so it's not limited so within our spirit there are places that we can meet God now it sounds a bit strange but actually there are places where when we learn to engage them we can actually sit and talk with God we can walk with him within ourselves because he's in us and now that you know t takes some developing but that's part of what we want to do during these times we want to be naturally supernatural we don't want to be spooky you know it's like you know because you can be really sort of weird and, it, and it's not about being weird it's just I don't get the thing that Jesus was weird you know he was full of power and authority he had access to God and did miracles and all that stuff but I don't think he was weird and therefore people listened to him because they saw his character as well as the gifts and things that he did so in a sense everything we do in terms of being in a relationship with God is to develop our character as well as our gifting um, and so that we can we can see from a heavenly spiritual perspective because that's what Jesus said that he did he saw what the father was doing then he was able to do those things also um, so but you have to develop being able to see um, and it is that perspective that when you look from heaven to earth you see things differently because you see things the way God sees them you know, and that, that's what I mean from a, a spiritual heavenly perspective it's like when we look at things around us sometimes we can be so entangled with stuff it's difficult to see the wood for the trees but when you look at it from the perspective of heaven problems do seem smaller they seem in perspective because God is bigger than anything you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, I put a couple of things on the website by a guy called Louis Giglio. Um, and he's a, a guy in the States who's who set up a church in Atlanta where Chris Tomlin is and, and um, the Redmonds are. Uh, and yeah, he's done an excellent thing on how big is God, how great is God. Um, and God is enormous. And so when we see things from his perspective, you know, it, it puts it into the reality that nothing is impossible for God. 
Nothing's impossible for him to do and to change. And we need to learn how to hear the voice of God and be led by the Spirit. Now hearing the voice of God is not just audible and that is important because <clears throat> we have to learn to that God speaks to us in many different ways and the Holy Spirit leads us in many different ways. Romans 8.14 says those who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. So it's really important if we want to be God's children that we're led by the Holy Spirit, directed, guided, any words you want to use. So eventually we can live here but also live with our spirit connected to God in the realm of heaven so that we can see before because heaven is outside of time um, and therefore we can be connected to both past and future in that realm which enables us to deal with things from our past and also to get the heads up on things for the future. <coughs> So we need to develop our spiritual senses and we've looked in the past about these gateways of our spirit, soul and body that God is in us and God wants to flow through us um, so that we can see and hear and know and feel and perceive and understand and all those things would be hearing God's voice and we all hear his voice in slightly different ways because we're all unique and we're all designed by God to relate to him as he's created us to relate to him so we have to tune in and develop actually what's happening to us all the time because God is speaking to us all the time and quite often you're hearing his voice and maybe not even aware of it but you're being guided and those little things where you thought oh I won't go down that street or I won't take that turn actually can be the guidance of the Holy Spirit those little intuitions that you get can be the guidance of the Holy Spirit you know, it's not all great big flashing light visions like Paul had on the road to Damascus. You know, those things are great, but you can't have them all the time because bottom line, Paul ended up blind for a few days. So that wouldn't do us much good, you know, if it happened in the middle of the high street. Um, so there are times and places for different types of ways God speaks to us. Now, obviously, when you're in a place of worship and it's like there's, there's a strong sense of the presence of God because corporately it's all flowing out of us. Sometimes it's easy to get visions and dreams and pictures in that environment. But that environment is only one or two hours a week. So we need to learn how to actually see and hear the rest of the week. Uh, which means practice and l learning to listen and to tune in. You know, the, the illustration of tuning in you know, is that this room is filled with signals, wavelengths of sound and light. Um, if you have a receiver, you can tune into those signals and hear or see something. There are TV signals, you know, there are radio signals, there's all sorts of different sorts of wavelengths of light and sound that actually are broadcast that we can pick up if we've got the right receiving equipment. Now our spirit and our, actually our whole body is designed to pick up the sounds that God is broadcasting. Even when we're first in the, in the womb, one of the first nerves that is formed is the auditory nerve. And it's first connected to every organ in our body other than the spleen. So our whole body is designed to be a receiver of frequency and vibration and sound. And that is then fed to the ear and the brain interprets it. So we're designed to pick up the things of the spiritual realm. We've just never been taught. You know, Children do it automatically when they're very, very little. And so they find it that they can see angels and they see things that we don't necessarily see when we're grown up. You know, and we forget because it's no value is placed on it as kids or in fact sometimes as kids we basically say oh no don't don't have those imaginary friends you know actually okay we don't want them to have negative things but actually sometimes they may be their guardian angels who they're connected to and we talk them out of it because we go, oh no that's just being silly you know but we need to encourage uh, that and to tune in so there is the visual there is the audio there's the intuitive and their impressions, different ways in which we just understand the things of God. Now, the gifts of the Spirit 
prophecy, words of knowledge, wisdom, distinguishing of spirits, those gifts uh, are important. And there are things that we can seek. 1 Corinthians 14 one says, Pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So prophesying is hearing what God is saying and saying it, or seeing what God is saying and speaking it out. You know? So but those are gifts of the Spirit, which some people have more than others. And some people develop gifts more than others. But actually being able to hear God is for everybody. Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. That means everybody. You know, some people have gifts to do it in different ways, but we can all learn to hear. Now there are four real stages of experience that I want to encourage you to, to pursue. The first thing is to engage by faith. God always responds to faith because he's a rewarder of those who seek him by faith. So if you think, well, I'm not sure I can do any of these spiritual activities, just approach it by faith. So I'm just going to have a go and believe because God says. So we can use words and actions like we do in some of the exercises. We step in and we step out. Now, physically, all we're doing is taking a step forward. But it's an action which says, by faith, I want to engage that realm. And so we're just practicing engagement by faith. And actually, once you've encountered God, you can go back by faith. And most of the encounters that I tend to have when I'm going to do things, deliberately, specifically, I do by faith. I've engaged different places in heaven, so by faith I go and do things there. I don't necessarily need a trance, because if I'm in a trance, I'm completely out of myself, if you like, which isn't appropriate all the time, particularly when you're driving, you know. Because <laughs> I spend, when I drive, I spend a lot of time engaging with God and going places, but I'm still looking at the road, you know, and I've not had a crash yet. So, in a sense, it's like we have to learn to engage in different ways. Second thing is, it is visions, sometimes pictures or moving pictures, like in the third person. So it's like we're seeing something. And those visions or pictures get projected onto the screen of our imagination in our brain. Because the imagination is the screen where we see things. And again, that's not really very well developed. Because as children, we're taught to use the left side of our brain, which is the reading and the writing and the speaking. So we're taught all those things at school, not so much the right side of the brain, which is the musical, creative, spatial stuff. And so that tends to sort of get put down. So there are those things where we see things that God shows us, and also that we can use our imaginations to see things that we want to see. So we're reading a Bible story, we can picture it. In our mind, Jesus sat there feeding the 5,000 or what he's doing. You no, know, we, we can use our imagination to engage in the stories in the Bible. That's one thing. Then there are visitations. That's where in the first person, we actually are there. Now, it may not be our bodies there, but our spirits there. And that may involve trances in which we're unaware. Our body goes into a state of stasis and we're unaware of what's going on around us. And it's just like we're somewhere else. Um, it may involve being translated somewhere else, like Ezekiel. God picked him up by a lock of his hair and took him to Jerusalem when he was in Chaldea. You know, his spirit went somewhere else. I don't know what his body was doing because he was in the midst of a bunch of people talking at the time. Now, I don't know whether his body carried on talking or not, but his spirit went somewhere. You know, so those things actually do take place. Um, but we have to learn how to do them. Most of the times where I've had visitations, it's been because I've positioned myself in a place to receive those things, but then God has done something. You know, God has taken me somewhere. And I wasn't in control of the situation at all. You know, when you're in a trance, you've got no control at all over it. It's just, it happens, and when it finishes, it finishes. But we can actually learn how to do those things ourselves. So we can learn to see in the realm of the Spirit and to walk in the realm of the Spirit 
because we've developed that ability and that's something you have to practice quite a lot. Then there's habitation. When you've actually developed going there, then you can train your spirit to be there and here at the same time. Because again, your spirit is not bound by time and space. So it can be in two places at once. John 3.13, Jesus talked about that. When he was talking to Nicodemus, he basically says that, you know, this is the son of man who is in heaven. And he was talking there. Um, so look, literally he was dwelling there and he was talking to Nicodemus at the same time. Okay. So what we're going to do during these times, I want to give time uh, for question and answers. So that if you come, you know, having done some stuff in the week, you can come and ask questions. And we'll give a reasonable amount of time to that because it's important because I know a lot of people don't ask questions because they're afraid or they think they'll appear silly. There are no silly, stupid questions. If you don't know something, ask. Everyone else might know, but if you don't know, ask. Actually, you'll probably find that other people are waiting for someone else to ask the question. If you've got a question, try and keep it to what we're doing, not just off on some magical tangent somewhere, but actually ask, because you know, I find that when you ask, you engage creatively in the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit inspires things. You know, I've said things to people when they've asked me questions that I've never ever said before and didn't even know, because I just said it. Because the Holy Spirit can inspire creatively and speak through you things you don't know, because He can do that, because He wants us to be a channel of His voice. <laughs> in the middle of the thing, and thing yeah. um, so please feel free to ask questions and come with some questions write them out if you need to write them out so that you can get the answers to the things that you know now I might not know the answer you know I don't know everything in fact probably know you know a few micro percent of the whole information there is in the universe uh, but I know a person who does you know and we all know him actually and he will speak to us if we ask him and what we're looking to do in developing these times is practicing asking God things and hearing what he says because a lot of the time God will give you the answers if you ask him the questions but then you need to listen and develop listening to the answers feedback when we do exercises it's important to feed back. Now, what I mean by that is to reflect on what you've actually experienced and then share it. You know, oh, that's a bit scary, I've got to share it. Now, obviously it will be a bit difficult for 30 people to all share every encounter. Um, otherwise we'd be here all night. But it is important to practice sharing because what you're actually doing is going back over the experience and that is what you need to do when you have them, to revisit them, to meditate on them, to go back over them with God so that you get more experiences. And so when it has feedback, when you learn to share, what you're doing is learning to go back over what you've just experienced. And it is an important thing, very important in your own relationship to, with God to reflect on the things that have happened to you. Because I get as much from the reflection sometimes as I do from the actual encounter because that is when I start to engage and allow the Spirit of God to start speaking to me again and again so each week we'll do a little bit of a basic outline and it will be shorter than it is tonight so we'll have more time and then we will do practical exercises I'll encourage you to journal everything you know bring, bring a notebook bring some paper and pen just so that you can write things down. Get into the habit of writing everything that you encounter with God down. It is so easy to forget it. It really is. You think, oh, no, I won't forget that. And all sorts of stuff happen in life. And it's like, what did God say? What, what, what did I see? So write it down. And even when you're in the middle of something, if a thought comes into your mind, write it down. 
It won't break the flow of what God is doing. Sometimes when you're in a vision of trance, you can't really do anything. You're just stuck in it and it just plays out. And when it finishes, then write it down. But actually, if you're there and you're meditating on something or you're just seeing Jesus or whatever, and something comes into your mind, it may even be a question. Write it down. And then you can go back and write it, see it again. And sometimes it's like, if you don't write it down, you can miss so many things. So many of those fleeting thoughts and fleeting things are just God speaking. Faith. Everyone needs to engage by faith, okay? So don't think, oh, I can't do this. You can. By faith, you can have do an exercise. Homework. I will give her homework each week. We've got two weeks between each session, so there's plenty of time. It's not a lot, but what I would encourage you to do is practice some of the exercises that we do here at home. You know, if you just do it every two weeks, then you really won't practice enough to become familiar and flowing in the things of God. So that means you really need to find some time to give priority time to God. I've set up this online forum um, in which you can share some of the experiences, ask questions and relate to one another. You know, just share some of the things that you're feeling and thinking and I'll show you that later. Okay. All these exercises are really just little training programs. They're little scaffolding to help you build this stuff in your life. Tutors to train you. When you're familiar and flowing, you don't need to do the exercises because you're actually all then doing it. So exercises are only important, you know, it, it's like, you know, you can exercise and train for an athletic event, but if you never do the event, the exercise really doesn't find a fulfillment. So actually God wants us to be living this way, but the exercises can help. Building our spirit and developing our spiritual senses. That's what it's all about. In a sense, you can't build muscles without training them. You know, and I, I've said this before. You can try all the fads in the world. It don't work unless you push and do weights. You know, you have to exercise and strain your muscles so that they grow and build. And therefore you have to strain your spirit and go a bit further and push to enable it to grow, you know? And the more you do those things, the more they will grow and the more you will be able to hear and to see and to feel and all those things. Now, actually, we need to open our spirit, soul and body gates because they've been closed. So that God who's in us can flow through us and around us and out to us in every way. Therefore, if there are things that are blocking us, we need to actually cleanse them, get them sorted out and some of the little things we'll do will be some of to help that as well. It's really helpful to activate our imaginations, particularly if we've struggled with that. To activate them is just to do things so that we exercise our imagination. And we have to learn to see. You know, seeing doesn't just uh, happen, you have to learn. Just as we do when we learn to see and we learn to smell and to hear and to taste in the natural realm, we have to do it all in the spiritual realm as well. Okay. Hebrews 5.14. This is a scripture which talks about this. You know, solid food is for the mature. It's talking about the word of God. Who, because of practice, so mature people get mature because of practice. You don't just automatically get mature. See, we can grow as people into adults. It doesn't actually make us mature just makes us big and bigger because there are many childlike adults who've never grown up emotionally or in, a, in other ways because we've never learned you know so we have to practice to train our senses so that our senses are active in our soul realm and our spirit realm as well practice and it does go from desire now you've got a desire because you're here it's whether you will apply the discipline to the practice, it's whether that desire will turn into a light and a lifestyle that you want. You know, and it all comes down to actually being disciplined. Now, no one really likes that word, 
actually disciplined disciple. It's what Jesus did with his disciples. He disciplined them, trained them, taught them. He modeled things for them so they could actually do it themselves. But they had a practice and he sent them out on their own to do it. You know, two by two. That must be as scary as anything. Do you think? It's like, oh yeah, Jesus has done this stuff and now he's sending us out into these places that we don't even know whether they want to hear this stuff. You know, but when they did and they went by faith, God showed up and miracles happened and healings happened and all that stuff. But they had to step out. Okay. Now, I'll, I'm not going to ask you some questions, but I want you to think about the questions you would like to ask yourself so that you will be accountable to you yourself you can be accountable to someone else if you want and say look make sure that you ask me these things first thing is ask yourself have you spent more time or better time on quality time with god in the last fortnight so in fortnight's time when we get together will you have actually done any of the things in the meantime and if you think of that you're more likely to do it because you'll hold yourself accountable actually i want to do this so i'm going to do it you know have you meditated on the word of god because that is so important you know what have you done to build up your spirit you know, have you done that own work you know, have you recorded your experiences your struggles actually record everything you know ask yourself those questions um, and those things will stimulate you to move on and do the things that god wants Okay, four keys to hearing the voice of God. And this comes from Habakkuk 2 1. I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the rampart. If you're going to hear the voice of God, you've got to put yourself in a place where you can do it. If you're learning to do it, <coughs> doing it in the middle of a whole load of people talking to you is probably not the best place to practice. It will be a place where you need to hear the voice of God speak. But if you're learning to do it, the best place to learn to do it is generally on your own. Or in, a, in an environment where the presence of God is there. And you can still need to do it yourself. And it says, I will keep watch to see. So when you're doing it, you've got to look. You've got to watch and see. And then it says, what he will speak to me. Which seems to indicate that seeing and hearing go together and actually can be the same thing sometimes god will speak to us in the things that we see and sometimes in the things that we feel sometimes in the things that we hear and that we have gut instincts about and then it says um, and how i may reply this is a relationship that we're looking to develop with god two-way he actually wants us to talk to him and he wants us to communicate with him, not just give him a shopping list of stuff that we need. It's not really relationship, you know. And I think God wants us to be real and to be honest. So if we're struggling, tell him, God, I'm really struggling with this exercise. I just don't seem to be able to do it. Help. Show me why I'm struggling. Give me some insight into this thing you know and expect God to start to speak to you then the Lord answered and said record the vision and inscribe it on tablets that one who reads it may run so it's important that we write down the things that God says so that then we can use those things to help us to actually outwork what God is speaking to us okay what is God's voice? It is a flow of spontaneous thoughts, pictures, feelings and impressions. Sometimes you can get an audible voice, you know, very occasionally add an audible voice. Generally it's a spontaneous flow of stuff that comes into your head. And it's like, those people, well it's all in my head. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Because your brain is the link between your spirit and your body. So it's supposed to be in your head. Your imagination is in your brain. It's a screen that's there. So it's a perfectly okay to have those things going on in your head. 
And I know people will say, yeah, but it's just me thinking that. Yeah, of course it is, because it's your thoughts. But your thoughts can be interrupted by God's thoughts. So it's not you making it up, it's you giving the opportunity for God to speak to you. And I know people get all sort of panicky over, yeah, but how do I know it's me and not God? And how do I know it's God and not me? And you have all those sort of things. It's like most of the time it's actually God. Because if you really look at it, you think, why would I have thought that? When you're sat there not thinking, why do you think a thought comes into your head? If I sit there thinking right now, okay, I am going to think and look at this screen and see what I'm looking at. I'm thinking. So the things that I'm thinking are the things that are coming off the screen. But if I'm sat here in the presence of God, just meditating on Jesus and looking at him, and a load of things come into my head, it's really unlikely to be the devil. But you can always test it. And the way you test it is two ways. You line it up with the character and nature of God revealed in the Bible, or go and ask somebody that you respect. And I would encourage you, if you get lots of things that God speaks to you about, find someone that you can develop a good relationship with where you can share things with each other and bounce them off each other. What about this? You know, I was asking God this question and this is the answer I got. You get accountability that way and a check. Because if you're really way off being, hopefully someone will tell you. Well, I'm just not sure about that. Let's actually look, see what the Bible says. Now, sometimes God can blow our expectations and our things completely out of the water. So God can tell us things that no one's ever heard before. Now, therefore, you need wisdom in discerning the things that people share with you. Don't just sort of dismiss them because you don't hear it yourself. Does it line up with the character of God? Will it produce fruit in my life that makes me more like Jesus? They're all questions you can ask and, you know, to get this flow. But it is a spontaneous flow that just comes. And sometimes the flow keeps coming. You know, spontaneous flow means one after the other, after the other, after the other. Now, when I get a picture, I don't stop at the picture. I take that picture and I go back to God and say, what's this mean? So I ask him, then I can get another flow of, it means this, and get the interpretation of the picture. Now sometimes it's really obvious when you're having a vision and you're seeing it all, um, but actually visions can be very symbolic. And so some of the things in the visions will have meaning. Sometimes it's just, there's a point to it and none of the things have any meaning other than the point. Uh, but you just have to learn to develop those things and learn to go with the feelings you get. You know, gut instinct is a really good thing, you know, as it's led by the spirit. You know, I'm not talking about just our emotions. Emotions are not necessarily a good thing. It depends whether they're leading us or serving us. But God uses our feelings of, whoa, hang on, wait. And he will use things like that. That saved my life before, just going on gut instinct that God has given you know, impressions are really, really important. Sometimes I see things that I know what they are and I haven't had a really big vision. It's just almost like I'm seeing this thing that isn't really clear, but I just know exactly what it is. That's what an impression is. You just get an impression of what it is. You know it. You know, and that, those things happen a lot. I have to learn to become still. You know, part of the problem is life is really busy, there's a load of things going on, there's always something to be thinking about. To be still means to try and put all those worldly thoughts and needs and out of the way so that we can just sense that flow of thoughts and emotions within us. Yeah. But it takes practice. Fix your eyes of your heart upon Jesus so we can see in the spirit it's like what we look at we become like that's what the Bible says behold becoming what we behold so 
if you're stuck to think, well, what do I meditate on? Jesus is always a good one. Mm-hmm. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You think, well, I don't know what he looks like. Well, do not really matter. He was a bloke. You know, that's good enough. You know, if you're looking at, looking at him, he was a man. Therefore, you don't have to get every detail of his face necessarily to fix your eyes. Because what you're looking at is what he wants to communicate to you when you're speaking to him. Not really what he looks like. You know, it's, it's actually, wh- who is he? And get that revelation. Journal what he says and shows. Uh, again, really, really important. Now, that's enough of that. And we're going to practice now. So, first thing we're going to do in practicing is being still. Now, oh my word, this is going to be really hard. Now, don't start thinking about your shopping list now, all right? It's like, put those things out, because that's what you have to learn not to think about. Now, it's really hard to not think about something, because immediately you try not to think about something, you'll start thinking about it. So what you need to do in practicing being still, the thing that helps me the most, and in this little exercise, is something I, I recorded before, is basically using the Bible verse, be still. Be still and know that I'm God. It's a really good one to meditate on. Because everything you're doing is just focusing on being still and knowing that I'm God. And this is a dual exercise because it, it's also how I often use the Word of God when I'm meditating. I will speak out a verse to myself and just emphasize each word. So that as I'm emphasizing each word, the thoughts of God about a word can just come into my mind. Because that's how the Holy Spirit works. Yeah, I was doing this this morning on Psalm 139. Uh, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Now, before I did that this morning, I probably wouldn't have to be able to quote that word for word to you. But I meditated on that and probably had five sermons that came out of it. It was great. Just by just speaking it out and allowing all the thoughts about the words to just flow into my mind, and I wrote them all down. So we just have to do this exercise about being still. Psalm it's from Psalm forty six ten. Be still and know that I'm God. Um, the other version says, "Cease striving, let be, be still and know that I'm God." Now you might want to. Um, find a little place to lie down or relax where you are. There's a little picture up there, someone lying in a nice green pasture and chilling out. So I will play some music to start with and in it is just be still and know that I'm God spoken out and then after that's finished I'd encourage you to do that yourself. You may just do it in your head, you may want to speak it out gently to yourself. If you want to find a little place to, to do that, feel free.
Okay. Uh, so that's some feedback on that. How many people, um, if you've gone somewhere, then it's all right. <laughs> stay, stay where you are. Um, how many people struggled? That's okay. How many people were distracted by the siren that went? <laughs> <laughs> we have to get used to dealing with distractions because there's all sorts of things that will distract us from being able to, to hear God. Um, yeah, for some of you that might have been the longest five minutes of your life. Oh, I'm really trying and I can't do it. Yeah, this is where we have to learn to relax. Yeah, to be still is just to relax. And sometimes it's good to relax your muscles and just shake things. It's like there are lots of different ways you can just get into that place. But we have to learn how to be still because we're not taught how to be still. You know, most of us have very little silence in our lives. If you're going to use music to help, don't use music with words. Because you'll end up singing and going along and you'll be distracted by the words. Because it's very, very easy to be distracted, it just is. Because we're just not taught how to focus our mind and be still. Okay. Um, anyone find that really easy? Yeah. Anyone went to nice places? Where did you go? I was Right. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Well, that's really what we're looking for. It's just that sense of just rest and peace. Then it's so much easier then to see things begin to to actually flow into that environment. Yeah. Well, you get a big hug from an angel. Huh? <laughs> what? I was getting a big hug from an angel there. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes we those sort of things do happen when you just place yourself for them to happen. Now, if you struggled, you just have to practice. It just takes time to get rid of all the distractions and to train our mind not to be thinking about things it wants to, but to be thinking about the things we want it to. Hence, using a scripture verse and just speaking the thing out to yourself focuses the mind on what you're actually speaking. Because it's very hard to think and speak at the same time. If you try it, it's quite hard, unless you do it in tongues, it's really quite hard to do it. Um, so when you're actually speaking the word of God, actually you are focusing the mind. But what you don't want to be doing is trying to analyse what you're saying you just say it and that's all you do say it and then see what the flow of, of things that come from it okay all right um what do we do and um, let's let's actually look at the whole thing of activating things and i want to this little exercise really is about using your imagination okay so the best way to use your imagination is close your eyes it's really hard to use your imagination when you're practicing without your eyes closed because you're looking at stuff, <laughs> okay? So close your eyes and just picture your front door. You know, just use your imagination to picture what does your front door look like? Has it got a round handle? Has it got a, a straight handle? Has it got glass? Is it made of wood? Has it got a number on it? Just picture your front door. So when I do it, my front door has got roses in the glass, so it's really easy. It's all pretty. It's a very girly front door. Um, okay. But it's got a letterbox on it, and it's got a handle, and it's got a key lock. It's white. 
you know, and it's got bricks all around it. You know, I've walked through it a few times, so it's quite easy to picture it. Okay, actually picture yourself reaching out to the door handle. Because now you're actually putting yourself into your imagination. Um, and actually see if you can open the door. You might need to put a key and undo the key and undo the door. But actually just see yourself doing it. Now, I want you to picture a beach, and the beach is the sea side, the seashore, and there's water at the edge. Now, if you struggle with that picture, and you've been brought up in a city and haven't really got much things, there's a nice picture of a beach on the screen. If you want to have a glance at it and you're struggling to picture a beach, whenever you struggle to imagine something, actually go and look at something in the natural realm which is the doorway to your imagination. So when you're looking in the Bible and maybe you're looking at gates and doors and all those sorts of analogies and pictures, actually go and find a door and a gate, have a look at it, open it, walk in and out. And actually that is the trigger that then you can use your imagination to see. So when it's like, oh, there's a door that God is behind and he's knocking on it and he's saying, let me in, actually, opening the door and letting him in if you can open a natural door then you can open the spiritual door principles exactly the same take the handle turn it and pull the door open so you've got a picture of a beach and we're going to take the example a little bit further and i want you to imagine that you're actually standing looking at that beach and you're going to take a nice walk onto the sand and you're going to take your shoes off and socks and you're just going to walk on the sand and you can feel the sand it's warm sun's out it's a nice gentle breeze you can feel the sand between your toes and you're just going to walk slowly down the beach towards the seaside, the shore, and the waves are gently just lapping in. And you're just going to walk up to the edge of the water and just let your feet paddle in the water. It's nice and cool on your feet. Now I want you to look to your right and along the beach there's a person walking towards you. You know that this person is actually Jesus. And he's slowly walking towards you and there's a sense of anticipation that starts to build as this is Jesus and he's walking up to you. He stops in front of you and he just looks at you, looks into your eyes and you feel love, you feel acceptance, you feel his pleasure, you feel that he's really interested in you. Jesus looks at you knowingly and asks you, how are you? How are you doing? How are you feeling? And you can offload all the burdens and the anxieties and the worries and everything that you've been carrying, fears, struggles, you just feel that you can just hand them over to him and you feel light as all the weights and the cares of the world just lift off your shoulders and your spirit just feels joyful and free and 
and Jesus kneels down in front of you in the wet sand and he takes his finger and he draws or writes something in the sand just for you you look down and you see what he's drawn or what he's written Now Jesus looks up and looks into your eyes and tells you he loves you and then he turns and walks and you just walk back up the beach but you feel his presence with you you feel his joy and his peace and his love resting on you you feel lighter So again, anyone couldn't see anything in any of those exercises? Couldn't see anything at all? Couldn't see a front door? Couldn't see a door handle? No? Nope. Okay. I saw a door handle, but nothing else. That's okay. You saw something. It's the starting point. Even though you didn't see anything, did you feel in this picture what was going on? Did you feel peaceful? Did you feel a sense of the presence of Jesus with you yeah. okay well that's just that's good you know because it's all about learning all about practicing and the main thing in these things is you begin to activate your senses to tune into the spiritual realm and I was very very left-brained I couldn't have imagined anything you know six seven years ago you know I used to have I have prophetic gifts so I could see things that God showed me but I could never see anything I wanted to see you know I just wasn't in that place but I taught myself to meditate using the Word of God using pictures using this little exercise this is an exercise that first opened my whole imagination up I went to a conference to talk about uh, working with the police and church and um, some guy said right I'm not going to talk about that today I'm going to do this little exercise because I think you all need to relax <laughs> and uh, he led through this little exercise and all of a sudden I found I was following along now, I wasn't really seeing clearly but it struck me here is a way that I can experience the presence of God not just go on faith you know because faith good but experience is better you know so did anyone see what jesus wrote in the sand good well that's good well see you didn't see anything last time and this time you saw what jesus wrote in the sand um, last time i, I um, i've just kept saying you know that place that's been sleeping away yeah i was there but my brain went to that mad place just before you doze up this time I pitched the beach. Yeah. Jesus walking up, but he was like in silhouette because the sun, sun was there. behind him. Yeah, that's and good. And then he knelt down, he actually wrote, I love you, around on the beach. And then you said, I love you. Yeah. So, that's exactly what he wrote. He wrote that for me as well. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you know. See, so you can use the stories in the Bible, Jesus with the disciples, actually just use things like that and just picture yourself in it you know I've pictured myself sat down with the disciples when Jesus was and they were all laying down and they were eating and I've ended up in the conversation and hearing and talking and Jesus answering me because it's my imagination it's like you know I can engage it so it's sense you can engage things but we're just learning to go beyond what we normally do and I'd encourage you, just do that exercise again. Something similar, something that means something to you, a place that you may have been that's special to you. Go and sit there with Jesus and talk to him. 
you know it's these type of things which um, the more you practice them the better you become and what it does it tunes your senses in to hear to see to feel because as you learn all those things become easier and it becomes more natural and then you can start doing them wherever you are you know I can now do this while I'm driving I don't shut my eyes but I can do it while I'm driving you know if I was sat on a train or something like that I could close my eyes and I could be somewhere else you know because I've trained myself to do it now if I can train myself to do it from my scientific logical background then anybody can literally because I was very very left brain logic you know I reasoned everything out you know but now I'm much more intuitive because I've practiced listening talking asking questions and flowing okay so in that you may get a snapshot image you may get an impression you may just know something like you know you may have seen Jesus write something in the sand or you just might have just known that's what he wrote you know it's those sort of things some of you get full Hollywood production that's great you know it's like it is easier once you practice but every valid communication is all valid they're all equally valid the main thing is that we get what Jesus is saying or wanting us to understand you know whether we get it in full-blown 3d or whether we just get an impression that we know doesn't matter ultimately as long as we know and as long as we've heard God or, or, or understand okay now we're going to do another little exercise which is about speaking in tongues now if you can't speak in tongues this is going to be really difficult for you <laughs> um, but speaking in tongues is just a gift of the spirit it's a language which is a spiritual language that we get given which does not require our brain to think about it it flows from the spirit so if you can't speak in tongues then we need to we need to release that gift to you okay um, anyone can't speak in tongues okay few okay all right that's okay I'm just gonna pray now right and I'm gonna ask God to release this gift to you right now all you have to do is receive it by faith and in a minute when we start praying in tongues just start praying in tongues because all you'll do is something will just start flowing out of your spirit not from your head and the whole point of being able to speak in tongues is you can speak in tongues and pray in tongues sing in tongues while you're doing something else and you're also thinking in English so you can do two things at once and it's a really useful exercise so just just close our eyes and we're just going to pray Holy Spirit and just pray for those here who do not speak in tongues right now that you will release that gift to them that that will flow and bubble up in them that the gift of tongues will be released to them that you'll give them that spiritual gift to just flow from their spirit in the language of heaven in an earthly language whichever the language of angels you just give them that language so that they can just flow and just communicate with you and just bypass their head from their spirit just release that to them right now in Jesus name okay now what I want you to do out everybody I just want you to pray in tongues for a minute out loud as loud as you like quiet as you like but actually it's better to speak out loud so you can hear yourself okay and while you're doing it just hand any burdens you've got over to God anything that you feel might be in the way if you need to confess something that comes up because quite often when you try and get in the presence of God the enemy will start to say you did this today you did that today blah, blah. and if he does that just confess it immediately right okay yeah sorry God and it's gone okay just don't let that hinder you so we're going to pray in tongues for a minute outside and then when we've done that we're going to pray in tongues inside for a minute now what I mean by praying in tongues on the inside is you actually form the tongues without using your lips in your head inside there's two ways of doing it sometimes it forms and you get the words just come in your head 
better it comes from out of your guts is almost like you feel the words and you don't have them on your tongues because sometimes when I first tried to do this and I'd be trying to pray in tongues inside my mouth would still be saying it even though it wasn't coming out <laughs> um, so it was very difficult to actually do that on the inside and speak it out in English on the outside so I thought no I can't do that that's not how you do it and I had to train myself to just allow the words of tongues to go on the inside so I could do something on the outside okay so if you're still struggling and you can't flow in tongues, just talk to God and just tell him you love him. It's like, you know, don't, don't worry too much about it because we'll, we'll pray out, you know, next couple of Sundays if you're still struggling with it, we'll pray and release that gift to you. But it is just a flow. You don't think about it. It's just the gift. And as people start praying in tongues out loud, just join in with them. That's the best way of doing it. Just join in and flow with everybody else. Okay? So one minute, let's just pray in tongues out loud. Out loud so I can hear it, all right? Kia Ariando rosho mama, kati arando riando ro mama, i kata shando ro kuti kata indi mama, ariar indi shando ro mama kati, ariashi ma kata indi arando riando ro mama, shai arando ro mama, i shi kata ukotar indi arando riando rosho mama, kai ar indi shando ro mama. Okay, now let's pray in tongues now on the inside. So there should be just silence now. Okay, that's good. Now what we're going to do now is I want you to um, pray in tongues out loud and I want you to read Psalm 23. I think, oh, I don't know where Psalm 23 is. I'm going to put it up on the screen. <laughs> Most of you will know it. You might have your Bibles with you. You might want to read it in your own version. So what you're going to be doing, you're going to be doing two things at once, okay? All right. So Psalm 23, very well-known psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So pray in tongues, out loud, but read this. So you're going to do two things at once, okay? If you're not, still not flowing in tongues, then just, just read it. Um, but while you're reading it, just try to picture it. Close your, you know, if you, you can't close your eyes and picture it. Close one eye. <laughs> close one eye and look at it there. So just, just try and, in your, while you're reading it, just picture it in your head because you can do both okay so let's just pray in tongues and let's read in our minds the Lord is my shepherd Sharandariando Rukuti Shandorandariando Roma Shiarandariando Rukuti Arandarindi Mamatre Ayarando Roshoma Katarindi Arandariando Roshima Makatarindi Mamama Ariando Roshoma Katarindi Arando Rima I Shiarando Roma Kayarando Romatre Arashandoroma kati andoroshu makata Ishandoroma makati arandariando roshu mama Ki arandariando roshi mama kati arandarindima Ariashandoroma mama Ki arandarema ushandoro kuti 
ikatarindi arandoroma yarindi shayaran daroma katarindi sharandariama okoki areshi katarandoroma yarando roshoma katarindi arandoroma ishama akatarindi kata ariando roshoma ma arindi arandoroma Yarondo roshoma kati aroma ikatarindi sharando roma kati ariando roshoma ariando rokuta arashima katarindi aranda riando roma ma o roshoma katarindi aranda roma arishama arando rokuti ma 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 ki arando roshoma ma yarindi aroma. All right, okay. Now, now we're going to swap around. <laughs> so I want you to read the Lord is my shepherd I want you to pray in tongues on the inside oh, wow. now it takes practice but the more you practice it the easier it becomes so just as you were able to do one you can do the other um, you may find it easier you may find it harder but same thing so we're going to just read the Lord is my shepherd out loud but in Side, we're going to be praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. right, so let's have a go at that one. <laughs> yeah, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, he restores my soul, he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you're with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, let's read it again, keep going. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul, he guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay. What was easier? First time? Second time? Neither. First time. Yeah? Yeah. See, second time. Great. See, we're all different. And, you know, in a sense, the first time, we're used to reading quietly, aren't we? It's not very often we read out loud to ourselves. So we're used to reading quietly. And so our brain is used to doing that. So then when you come to speak out in tongues, and your brain is used to doing something, it's just easier to do it. But what it is, your spirit is continually functioning and while you're reading, your spirit is drawing revelation from the words. That's what you're looking to do. When you're looking to pray in tongues, while you're reading the word of God, you're looking for your spirit to get revelation. So I'm, when I'm doing it, it's like, you know, I wouldn't very often read a whole psalm through doing it. I would get to a point where something would leap out at me and I would stay there. And it'd be right, okay. And it might just be, the Lord is my shepherd. And it's like, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah, the Lord is my shepherd. He's the Lord. He's the Lord of all. He's the Lord of hosts. He's, but he's my shepherd. Wow. Yeah, and it's like, all sudden, all sudden thoughts start to come. And it's like, he's the Lord. What's the Lord? Okay, the names of the Lord. The Lord, my righteousness. The Lord, my peace. Lord, my healer, the Lord, my provider. You know, the more you've got a revelation and you know the word of God, obviously the easier it is for stuff to flow from the word. But actually God can start to put thoughts in your mind anyway. What's the shepherd? Oh yeah, a shepherd looks after the sheep. He looks after, oh, isn't there a Bible story where the, the one went off and left the 99, he went off and found the one sheep and he went and brought it back. It's like all sorts of stuff can start coming into your mind as you learn to do it. Now, the second thing is sometimes harder for those because if you're not used to praying in tongues and you're not used to speaking out in this reading both things are quite unfamiliar but what the exercise really is doing is to show you you can do two things at the same time and your spirit can be engaged in something while your brain is engaged in something else so 
I pray in tongues all the time. I'm walking down the street, I'm praying in tongues. And it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, God, is there anything they want me to do here? Am I supposed to see something? It's like, I'm just praying in tongues. You know, sometimes I'm just merrily wandering around, going to do what I need to do, come back. Sometimes, actually, I'd be like, I get all sorts of thoughts that come. You know, and it's like God starts to speak to me as I'm walking down the street. Because my spirit, what tongues it says does, edifies your spirit. So it builds it up, it tunes it in. So you can tune in to the things of God more easily when your spirit is active. And what praying in tongues all the time does, it just keeps your spirit active. And it's like there's a, a famous book I called Brother Lawrence, Practicing the Presence of God. And every few minutes, so I can't remember, it was a period of time in the story, that this guy used to just stop and recenter his thoughts back on God. And, you know, I, I, today I was talking to a guy and he actually has put one, a little buzzer under his shirt and he set it to go off every 10 minutes. And you can't hear it, but it buzzes. And, he, and it, every 10 minutes, he starts to realign himself with the thoughts of God. And if he's having, and he said, when I first started to do it, I noticed how often I was having negative thoughts when the buzzer went off. And it was like, woo, I'm going to not think that way. I'm going to get back. I'm going to start thinking about God. I'm going to start, oh God, all right, I'm in your presence. Same thing when you step in and out of the presence of God in the heavenly realms. When I mean, this whole thing, I step into the resident. It's like every few minutes. It's like when I used to practice this stuff a lot, I'd be like, right, stepping into the presence of God. Oh, I get robes of righteousness on again. Right, and, yeah, coming back out, feeling energized, directed. It's just practice. But as you do it more, everything starts to flow more and your spirit gets charged. And then you can really start to do things that you'd be doing, like your jobs, things like that, but your spirit can be a drawing on revelation and strength from God to do your things better and quicker and more efficiently and effectively. When Ian Clayton was doing this stuff, he said that something that used to take him eight hours to do in his job, he was able to do in two. Because suddenly, heaven seemed to envelop him. And he wasn't sure whether he was off somewhere else or whether time slowed down. He just he didn't know how. But he just knew that he could do things quicker and more efficiently when he was sensitive to the presence of God. And it all started by praying in tongues on the inside and the outside. Just activating senses that we've left dormant so that we're continually tuned in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I find it difficult to know where I should be praying in tongues. Because you can't really do it with your mouth. Are you doing it with your stomach? Well, some, I don't know. What, what do people think? I mean, when I started to do it, I struggled because my mouth tried to form the words when on the inside. But when I stopped my tongue moving, then it forced the words to go into my head. So the words of tongue just seemed to form in my head. But actually then I was trying to think about what I was reading, so that seemed to get in the way. So then it, like, I, it seemed to come out of my stomach. Like it just seemed to bubble up from the inside so that I could read something, like the Lord is my shepherd, be thinking about what I was reading and praying in tongues at the same time. So I'm doing three things. See, we can all multitask, even men. We can do it, guys. We can do it. You know, but it is just practice. You know, it is just practice. Now, I just want to um, just do one more exercise along this way, okay? Now, I'm going to read Psalm 23 to you. So, I want you to close your eyes and I want you, while I'm reading it, to picture yourself in the whole story. And it may be you just get to lie down in green pastures. And that's where you are. It may be you're, you're acting out the whole thing fine. But just picture Jesus as your shepherd. And as you're doing it, just allow the words to just run over. And allow your spirit to use the sort of words to form revelation. God may speak to you through it. It's like, I'm to be totally open to what might happen. And then... After you've done that, what I want you to do, as the music continues, I want you to 
picture you're sitting down in green pastures with Jesus and you ask him a question. Start with something really easy, not who's going to win the FA Cup this year or something like that, right? Start with something really easy like, how do you feel about me, Jesus? And write down what he says. So that means get your notepad and your pen when you do it and just start writing what starts to flow in your head. Don't think about it. Don't try and analyse it. Just write it because it will start to flow. You may get one sentence, you may get a whole page. But just keeps, it, it, it doesn't matter, it's just practicing because what you're practicing here is how to journal a question and an answer from God. Okay? So first, just picture Jesus for a few minutes while the psalm is being read. I think it gets read over a couple of times. And then as that goes on, just ask, see, Jesus is sat there, you're sat there, you're at his feet. And you talk to him and you just ask him something and then you just begin to write down what he says to you. Okay?
Okay. Son. This picture of Jesus. Okay. How many um, were able to picture themselves in the psalm? Yeah. Okay. Anyone really struggle with that? Okay. That's all right. You know. Uh, you know, if if you're getting any of this for the first time, you've never done any of these exercises before, then you're doing good. You know, because when, when I first did them, I couldn't do them at all. You know, I really struggled, but I persevered and practiced, and it it developed into different things. Anyone get anything? Some of you are still writing to the question. Yeah. Anyone not get anything to the question? Okay, okay, so when you ask the question, what happened? Did it just go completely blank? Did other thoughts come into your mind? What happened? Just went blank. So nothing came into your mind at all. Okay, in that, when that happens, just go back to picturing Jesus again. And just ask him the question again. Because once you can picture Jesus and then you can ask him the question, then it's getting, it's almost like when you, you get a pump of water, you get this little cup, someone leaves a little bit of water at the side. And what you've got to do is tip that water into the pump to prime it. And, and once the pump gets flowing, it's great. Water pumps out of it but it needs some, needs some priming. And some of these little exercises just start to prime the pump, you know? And in a sense, you may find that you get pictures come into your mind rather than words. And that's just write down the pictures. You may just get feelings. Oh, I just felt really nice. Or I felt really warm. Write those things down. You know, just be open to the different ways that God speaks. Okay. Now, uh, I want. Do you, have you had enough, or do you want to do one more exercise? It's up to you. Hmm. Whatever one want. Uh, this, this. I don't know when I'm doing do this. All right. Okay. I'll I'll skip that. Uh, now, literally. Your imagination, the eyes of your heart, has a screen and has two sides. So on this side, the left side, let's say it gets things projected. Okay? So pictures, visions, all that stuff gets projected onto that screen. You use that screen to think about something, imagine something. That gets projected onto the screen. But there's another side to it. Now this side is like a curtain and a portal and this is where we need to learn how to see actually see in the realm of the kingdom not just have visions of it and this is a completely different concept and not one that i've taught before but i've been practicing it a bit and i've had some breakthroughs with it see lots of times i have been taken into heaven as a trance of in a type of experience like I'm there and I'm in it walking around talking to God doing all that sort of stuff I'm no control over that at all it's just it happens when it happens and then it doesn't happen when it doesn't happen but I know God wants me to be able to walk in the realms of heaven deliberately and go to the places that I need to go to not just by faith but actually do it so what we need to do is we need to develop seeing in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the kingdom. Now, I don't want to look into the spirit world and see demons. I'm not interested in them. I want to look into the realm of the kingdom and see the realms of heaven. So when you close your eyes, everyone close their eyes, what do you see? Nothing, mostly. Black. Now that is because we've not trained ourselves to see. So all we see is like a big black nothingness. Think of it as a big black curtain. That's this right side of the screen of our imagination. Now we've been exercising the left side and we've been seeing stuff by meditating, 
by speaking the word of God, by praying in tongues, we see stuff. Now, what I want to do is to give you an exercise which is actually so you can see with your eyes closed. Now, you think, well, how can I see with my eyes closed? Because you're going to see with the eyes of your heart, not with your retina. Okay, so what, you, what we're going to do, okay, I want you to see your hand. So look at your hand. Okay, now look at it really closely. Look at all the different lines on it. Some of you got more lines than others. <laughs> Mine are all lovely and smooth and really nice. <laughs> but you can see it, okay? Now I want you to close your eyes and I want you to see your hand. Picture it. See all the same lines. See what it looks like. Picture it. Now open your eyes and look at your hand again. Have a good look at it. Because what I want you to do and what this exercise is about is about seeing your hand not as a projected image but seeing it in your mind. So close your eyes again and now just see your hand in front of your face. See all the fingers, see all the lines, actually start to see it. Now open your eyes again and look at your hand. Now I want you to just practice doing this. Now when I started to, to practice to do this it was like I was rubbish at it. It's like I really was rubbish. I couldn't see anything to start with and now I focused. I really no, I want to see my hand with my eyes shut. I want to see it. First I could just see the outline of it. it just seemed like you know something moved in front of my face with my eyes thing. I could see something. I could see the outline of it and then I focus more. I'm going to look closely. Yeah, those lines are moving across my palm in that direction. I've got a ring on my forefinger. You know, and I started to see it. So, you know, so just open your eyes, look, close your eyes for a few times and just try and see if you can actually see. Yeah. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to see that hand in front of this big dark curtain that's there. And I want you to reach out with your hand and pull back the curtain. And just look and see what's behind the curtain. Okay, now that might have been really hard. Did anyone, could anyone see their hand? Uh, yeah, okay, that's good. Anyone see anything when they pull the curtain back? Okay, what did you see? Bright light. Bright light, that's really good. Because that's generally what you usually see. <coughs> anything else? Any, anyone see colours? I saw like a really vibrant colours, sort of like a meadow with flowers. Yeah. see blue. Blue, okay, yeah. Yellow? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, this is, this is an exercise which you have to practice and practice. And essentially what you're looking to do is that screen is there, that black screen is there because we've not taught ourselves or not been taught to actually see, actually see in the realm of that kingdom realm. And often what you first do is you do see light because the realm is a walking, you know, you see in the light. That's what happens to start with. Now, those of you who are more experienced will probably see other things. Um, for me, I saw when I first did it, I saw specks of light and then I focused on the specks of light and I actually saw that those lights came together and I could see a, a, a big portal of light, which I jumped through. 
Now, I didn't jump through this one I just saw then because I thought I might not come back. You know, because sometimes <laughs> last time I went through it, I didn't know how long I was there. So it's like, but what you're looking to do is you're looking to see in the light because the kingdom is a kingdom of light. The first realm of the kingdom is in light and dark and then the next realm of the kingdom is in light and all the realms upwards are in light. So when you first look in, you may see light and dark. You may see portals of light or things that open. You may see angels. There's all sorts of things you might see. Colors are usually angelic things moving in and out of that realm. Because when you start to engage and start to look, they really get excited. Because most people don't look. And most people don't then walk in that right because what you do once you start to see things then you start to step into it and actually start to walk in those realms now it it, it does take practice because we've just not been taught to do this stuff you know and it's great getting visions and pictures and stuff projected on that side great awesome stuff but actually i want to walk in the light as he is in the light as it says yeah It's, they're the angels. There's there's a group of angels called Kashmelium who are called the coloured ones, basically. And they often are ribbons of colours or different colours. Sometimes colours represent one of the seven spirits of God. There's a different colour. You sometimes get a sheen of colour in a particular area. But what you're looking to do is just start to see. Now, you may only see light for a while, but hey that's better than not that's better than seeing dark because what we normally see see when you go to sleep at night and you shut your eyes darkness shuts you down to go to sleep so when you go to sleep rather than let darkness shut you down start to pull the curtain back get your body to go to sleep and get your soul and spirit to walk into what you see and it's called the night watch. You can read about it in Psalms. So I, I, don't, I never get complete blackness. It's like blotches of light. Blotches yeah. of shapes. But yeah. I think that's normally coherent. I can't understand it. But of, often that's just because <laughs> you may be spiritually sensitive and there are things there that you can't focus on. So what you've got to do is train yourself to focus. You may also be seeing in the realm of the spirit which is not just the realm of the kingdom so you've got to be careful what you're looking at but as you focus things become more clear actually start just focusing looking for the light because ultimately it's the light you want to walk into to see okay so this is you know it's, it is a new exercise and it is a different way of thinking about it but it is something i believe god wants us to be able to do yeah I couldn't quite see my hand, but it was like it was almost like I could sit behind the curtain, so I could see it moving as I moved. As yeah. I pulled it back, what I saw was like the stage and like a spotlight of light coming down and then shadows around the spotlight. Yeah. So you, you get all sorts of images that will be to do with light. It's like, but the main thing is you saw light, and that is the realm of walk, seeing in the light. And you, you just have to practice. And, you know, if anyone saw anything doing that, you did a really good job because it's not, that's not something that I've taught before and it's not something we're used to doing. Some of you have engaged in some of those realms before and you can, you step into them. But it's like, it's one of those things you have to really look to persevere and press into. Um, beyond that, what, what you expect to see beyond that, you know, when we finish seeing the light well you, you want to walk into the light you may see once you see the light and you look into it you should start to see the realm of the kingdom and see what you could see angels you might see mountains you might see thrones you might see a, you might see a, a garden you might see rivers waterfalls just entirely depends on what god wants to do with you because in a sense you will see into the things which are flowing in your destiny it's like it's, we're all different we're all individual so the things that we the things you see are about your destiny well ultimately you can see all sorts of things once you once you're used to walking in that realm 
you can you can go to places like the record room in heaven all sorts of places you can go but to start with you'll start to see things which are it's like heaven isn't just one place it's like a multiverse of things so we all see it in the way in which we see it now the throne of god is described for us in the bible and and often there are things there which oh yeah i sort of recognize that but also i've seen all sorts of things which is like it's how god speaks to me so i get loads of rivers loads of waterfalls loads of gardens mountains and that's what i'm familiar with yeah because you'll start walking in and getting in the river and then things will start to happen to start with just develop seeing into that realm and then once you start to see more than just the light it's like you'll then start to be able to engage with that realm deliberately you know but it's all good <laughs> um, but it does take it does take perseverance and a lot of practice so practice the other exercises because that gets your spirit built up and then practice these ones that can use that engagement into the realms of heaven